Good afternoon to my two senators that are present here this afternoon, Senator Moylan and Senator Ada. And we do yeah. expect people to come in and testify in regards to this bill. This virtual public hearing is now called to order. And today's, today's date is May 10, 2021. And the time now is um, two o'clock exactly. The Committee on Public Safety, Emergency Response, Military and Veterans Affairs, Marriage Council of Guam, and Public Transit is conducting a public hearing today on bill number 106-36 COR. And for the record in, in conformance with section 8107 of chapter eight, title five GCA, the first public hearing notice was sent out on Monday, May 3rd, 2021, to adhere to the five working days requirement and the second public hearing adhering to the 48 hours notice was sent out on Friday, May 7, 2021. And in, in addition to these notices were also sent out to the media and posted on the Guam Legislature's work, uh, website. Now we will begin with bill number 106-36 COR, authored by, authored by James C. Moylan and co-sponsored by Jos, Joe S. and Augustine, myself, C. Peter Terlai, Frank Blas Jr. And this is an act to add Section 6010901 I 1 I and Section 6010901 I 1 J to Chapter 60, ti 60 Title 10 Guam Code Annotated relative to including police precincts and government offices to the list of exceptions where an authorized individual should not openly carry a firearm or carry a concealed firearm. And now, since we don't have any uh, anybody to testify in regards to this other than the senators present, uh, let me start out with Senator Moylan and give us a, can you share your thoughts with us regarding this bill? And then we'll go to Senator Ada and Senator Chris uh, Dernius. Go ahead, Senator Moylan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for uh, co-sponsoring as well uh, and for this public hearing. Uh, as you mentioned, this bill will add uh, police precincts and the government offices to a list of exceptions where an authorized individual shall not openly carry a firearm or carry a concealed weapon. This includes businesses that place a sign prohibiting uh, the carrying of firearms uh, at their premises. Uh, the government facilities that presently don't allow firearms and facilities are the Guam Congress Building, Superior Court of Guam, Guam Department of Education Schools, Department of Corrections, and the Department of Youth Affairs. Uh, the Guam Police Department has recommended adding GPD precincts and their offices under their control uh, to the list. So currently, uh, one can walk into a police station with a firearm which is a concern of GPD. So the inclusion for these measures will further expand, were further expanded to include government offices as well, inclusive of Adelu. Uh, now this act does not take away the right for one to bear arms, rather it prevents the carrying of a firearm into a police station or government offices. Just like the restrictions at the District of Guam, the Guam College Building and Department of Corrections and many businesses. The individual may simply secure the weapon in their vehicle prior to entering the entity, which is authorized by this statute. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the public hearing. I'm looking forward to discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Senator Moyle. Now we go to uh, go forward with Senator Tony Ada, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no uh, questions of the author of the legislation. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, moving forward, we go to Senator Chris Duenius. Uh, you know, much like Senator Ada and Sidus Masi, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I came on to listen, um, you know, and get some more information on the, on the intent. Uh, so maybe if there aren't any others to uh, testify, or I see maybe some folks coming on, I see Major Manny. Uh, maybe I'll listen for now, Mr. Chairman, and if some questions comes up, I'll, I'll, I'll make a request yeah, from you. Maybe we'll go to uh, Major uh, Manny Chung. 
Go ahead, Manny, uh, Major. Thank you, Senators. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Sorry, uh, I was uh, uh, busy with uh, some uh, other uh, priorities. But uh, anyways, looking at the amendment to the law uh, in this proposed bill, uh, I fully support uh, the uh, intention of this bill. And, uh, you know, uh, that's all I have to say, sir. Okay, so we'll go back to Senator uh, Jennings now, and then we'll go to Senator uh, Tello Taitagui. Go ahead, Chris. So, Major, um, li like I said, uh, I apologize. I, I haven't um, had much time to review this particular bill. Um, is what is did this generate um, from from GPD as a concern uh, with regard to maybe a. a experiencing issues uh, with regard to this. And the only reason why I bring that up is, oh, I, I, I definitely understand uh, what GPD faces uh, every day and, and the harms that they face and what they have to do to prevent exposure to uh, sit unknown situations and the like. I just also want to, you know, be as cautious as possible with, uh, you know, the rights of, of those individuals protecting themselves as well. So, can you just give me a little bit more information maybe on the background for, for this added, added requirement? Oh, yes, yeah, so from my understanding, uh, there was uh, several command staff uh, officers that met with Senator Boylan. And, uh, you know, uh, it was a concern uh, regarding uh, people coming into the precinct with uh, firearms. Uh, you know, uh, it was just a preventative measure. You know, we never know anybody's intentions when they come into the precinct. Okay, so when an officer, you know, sees uh, somebody coming in with a gun, okay, or, you know, automatically that officer is on alert. Okay, so, you know, it, this is just a preventative measure, Senator, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, it'll just avoid uh, any type of, uh, uh, any type of, um, what's the word for it? Um, emergency, okay. Uh, that, it, it's something that would, um, it'll prevent something bad from happening. Let's put it that way. If uh, someone doesn't walk into the precinct with a gun, okay. Um, and uh, I, I wasn't at that meeting with uh, Senator Moylan and the command staff uh, officers. Uh, he might have more details as to what their discussion was, but uh, that, that's the gist of what I understand this meeting was about. It's to prevent any type of uh, incident from occurring because somebody's carrying a gun, officers are more uh, alert. And, uh, you know, um, th 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 like I said, that's my understanding. Thank you, Major Chong. And uh, so I'll continue to, to listen and definitely work with the uh, with the author. Uh, I'm sure you'll have some additional comments in closing, but uh, definitely also just sit down with them personally to get some more information. But I, I definitely appreciate your uh, perspective, uh, Major, and uh, I'll, I'll continue to listen. Okay, we just uh, Senator Jenny's now, and we go ahead, Senator, ma'am. I just want to see uh, Senator Chalahi and uh, good afternoon uh, to the panel here today. Uh, Major Chong, this question is to you. Uh, thank you, by the way, for being here today um, to provide some kind of information. I was hoping to get, uh, well, first let me start off. Um, who's the makeup of the command staff that you were talking about that met with uh, Senator Moylan? Ma'am, you're gonna have to ask Senator Moylan that. Uh, I, like I said, I wasn't there. I just heard uh, the discussion. Uh, so, if, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know who actually okay. attended. Okay, Manny. Uh, uh, Major, is would that be the chief of police or was the chief of police there? No, no. Um, police was not there. Um, I believe uh, a couple of lieutenants and some uh, uh, some sergeant to command staff officers. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know if there was a captain that was involved in that meeting. Okay. I, I'm curious to hear the testimony. Manny, can we also ask if we have the chief of police to um, also provide a testimony? Um, 
many in other jurisdictions, um, places like you know the the these areas of precincts where it exempts these areas openly. Are you familiar in other jurisdictions if this is the case, like in Hawaii or California? Uh, you know, ma'am, I didn't have time to research this. Did, uh, you know, these are okay. uh, command staff officers that approached Senator Moylan. Uh, oh. You know, they 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 saw a potential problem and they. Uh, you know, they put their minds together and uh, they came up with a solution to prevent anything bad from happening. Um, okay. I'm pretty Thanks. sure they did the research, ma'am. You know, I, I unfortunately, I'm holding two uh, hats here and I wasn't mm -hmm. able to do, to do that research. But, uh, no. you know, I can, get, I can get information from these uh, officers that uh, met with Senator Moylan and uh, get more details and we I could uh, submit some uh, written uh, uh, testimony uh, to uh, okay. Senator Talai. Thank you, Ma Major. Um, <clears throat> the Chief of Police is on. Um, Mr. Chair, if I, I'd like to yield to the Chief of Police and um, maybe ask, be able to ask some questions if you would like to provide some insight. Uh, Chief Ignacio, <clears throat> I was just asking Mr. Chong, who is made up this command staff that visited Senator Moylan to create this legislation, number two, um, other jurisdictions that have the same type of uh, legislation uh, that you might know of? And um, is this something that's also uh, coming from your office? And um, has there been issues um, related to, uh, you know, these areas that, that are a concern, you know, where situations come? Thank you. Thank you, Chief Ignacio. Uh, thank you, Senator Tidewing, and good afternoon uh, to the senators of the 36th Guam Legislature. So, uh, the Guam Police Department, we, we in general, we support uh, the intent of this bill uh, with regards to the police precincts. And uh, what it is really is that in the current statute, uh, I don't, and this is the group, again, uh, this is the group of command staff officers that went to visit Senator Moylan. Uh, we discovered that uh, police precincts were not covered uh, under the statute, the current statute. So we wanted to expand that uh, just to provide more clarity. Uh, although we believe that we have the, the, the authority uh, to do it without legislation, uh, we wanted to make sure that we provided uh, clarity uh, to our authority to restrict persons from coming into our police precincts with uh, firearms or, or uh, yeah, firearms in, in general. Uh, what I didn't realize is that it was expanded a little bit more to include government offices. And uh, again, you know, I am not, I don't want to be the one, or I don't think the Guam Police Department should be the agency uh, to dictate to other government uh, agencies, uh, their directors, uh, as to whether or not uh, carrying of firearms on their premises is allowed. Uh, some of the things you have to consider is that some, some of these offices, if not a, a good percentage of them, uh, are co-located with private, uh, within private uh, businesses. Uh, for example, there, there are numerous government agencies uh, within the ITC building. Uh, there's a couple at uh, GCIC. And so when, when we restrict the carrying of firearms into government offices, uh, uh, we're where does it extend to? Uh, because they'll be crossing into common areas, uh, elevators, stairwells, uh, hallways uh, that are private property where the carrying of a firearm is acceptable to the property owners. And so uh, this was actually a, a concern raised to me by one of the directors, uh, you know, that uh, they, they would like to determined for their own sake uh, whether or not uh, firearms sh should be allowed on their premises. Uh, you, you know, uh, I'm not sure what's going on in the United States, but uh, I, I think most of us are aware that there have been a rash of shootings in the United States within the past month and probably within the past week. Uh, just after our uh, earlier uh, hearing this morning on Bill 34-36, I, 
I got in to take care of some business and uh, listening again to to uh, the death of six people in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I know, uh, look like domestic in nature. And so, you know, those are some of the things that we consider as we restrict firearms in the, the workplace is that, uh, you know, is the police response adequate? Is the number of police personnel adequate uh, to respond in a timely manner? Because we, we have, um, we have workplace violence shooting, uh, domestic violence in the workplace shooting. And uh, so those are some of the things to, to consider. The other thing is that most government of Guam officers are not geared uh, with that mindset of the active shooter. Uh, entry and exit into government of Guam officers are, are, are very, I mean, it's easy to walk in to a government office. Uh, there's no controls in place. Uh, we unfortunately had an incident uh, about a month ago of uh, a threat to workplace violence uh, at Adeloup of all places. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, had it not been for the quick response of the officers, I mean, th that thing had the potential to go south very fast, uh, considering the type of weapons that were brought uh, to the workplace and uh, the, the incident that played out, you know, and I can't go much into it because it's still, um, there was an arrest made and of course that the case has to be adjudicated to the court. But, uh, you know, I, I was just talking about this piece last week with um, the Department of Education's um, master facilities planners out of uh, Hawaii. And that, that was one of my key areas of, of concern was really the lack of preparation on the school's part uh, to be prepared for an active shooter incident. Uh, the schools are old, they're antiquated, they don't have the technology uh, to deal with active shooter situations. I mean, something as simple as how does somebody at Southern High, you know, in the math department uh, know that there's a shooting or an active shooter situation in the, in maybe the, the school office, right? And uh, because it's such a, a big campus, uh, you know, it's got so many classrooms and so much territory to cover. Uh, how are we going to know uh, there's an active shooter situation going on? And, and that was a point that was made during our um, community outreach with uh, the DOE when we started to look at the safe schools, is that uh, they were really lacking with uh, the technology and uh, the, the uh, equipment uh, to deal with active shooter situations. So uh, I support uh, the, the piece with uh, the police departments. Uh, as far as the other government agencies, um, you know, I don't see any other director here on that uh, may want to put their two cents into this, uh, but just something to consider. Uh, there's Mr. Carlson. Yeah. And uh, that, that's all I have, uh, Senator. Uh, as far as your other question is, <clears throat> To how other jurisdictions handle this, uh, like Major Manny said, you know, it, um, it's something that we're going to have to look into and see what uh, other states and jurisdictions have in place uh, for government buildings. I, I do know that one of the other, uh, at least uh, in my experience, uh, I'm, I'm surprised Civil Service Commission has a rule in place where uh, you can't bring a firearm into the, the hearing room. Uh, yet at the same time, you know, uh, when there's a very sensitive case going on, uh, the Guam Police Department is asked to come down and provide security uh, with an armed officer, uh, you know, when, when they have some very sensitive cases going on. Yeah. Okay. So, well, thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Ignacio. That was very informative uh, and, and good information. And definitely, this is heart-wrenching what's happening in Colorado. I mean, this is maybe the second incident in Colorado alone by itself, but uh, we all remember the in SDA incident too, um, the shooting at SDA, and many of us still, you know, it's it's still very fresh in our mind, even though it is a long time ago. It's something that we have to prevent, and I think this legislation may not. Uh, I mean, it it does need work because the second part of it is a concern that you have. Uh, the first part that you mentioned that you might be able to do this already within your authority. Um, and, and I guess, uh, Chief, the next step would be just to ask the Attorney General's office if you have that ability to, to already uh, implement this uh, restriction um, at the precincts 
where you have jurisdiction over. So that might be something, we, that might be a lot quicker than a, a legislation you know, that we can do. Of course, definitely we have to look at the second part of, of the exemption and, and uh, um, that one probably would take a lot more uh, research. Um, you also mentioned um, active shooter. I, I thank you, by the way, Chief Ignacio, for all your work you're doing at DOE and working with them because this is an area that uh, has been on the news many a times in the US and we just, we're, you know, God help us and protect us here on Guam from anything as, you know, detrimental as that happening in our schools. But I'm, I'm very happy, you know, Chief Ignacio, you're, you're doing everything you can to prepare our schools. And at the same time, we can prepare our other government agencies and other places, but, um, my last question, Mr. Chair, before we turn it off over to Mr. Carlson, um, has there been any issue with regards to government agencies uh, that have had a circumstances that would uh, prelude to um, firearms in an agency that may have an issue? Has there ever been an incident that would uh, spark a reason why the legend um, this bill would come up. This is for Chief Supa. I mean, uh, Chief Ignacio, gosh, it's just habit for me calling you. <laughs> Chief? Uh, not, not, not in recent memory that, that I'm aware of, uh, other than, like I said, that, that recent incident at Adloop uh, mm -hmm. with a, an employee uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that we were called uh, to, to take care of. Okay, thank you, Chief, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'll, I'll also, I'll, I'll leave it with this, um, Chief Ignacio, if there's anything I can do to assist you in um, educating and providing these uh, active shooter um, exercises and, and help at the schools, like cameras, <laughs> additional cameras, <laughs> that might be very helpful too in your process. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. Okay, moving forward, uh, let me call on Lester Carlson. Sir, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Senator Talai, and uh, half of day, everybody. Uh, I came in a little late, uh, stepped out of a meeting uh, that took a little bit longer, but I, I did want, I, I have spoken to uh, Steve, uh, Chief Ignacio uh, and Senator Moylan about this, uh, this bill. I have 100% um, support for the, the portion that deals with police precincts. Uh, you don't go to a police precinct uh, to have a christening. You're there because you were a victim of a, a crime or you were, you're there because you were brought in because you were accused of committing a crime. So the circumstances are, are, are never uh, anything but uh, full of anxiety. Um, the, the, um, I read uh, Public Law 34150 uh, this morning, just to refresh my memory. And as uh, Chief Ignacio mentioned, there might be some administrative uh, ways to address uh, adding into just through uh, his authority in concurrence with the Attorney General, uh, a, a probably a very, very good idea of um, adding to the list of exclusions, which include the courts, the legislature, uh, and any business that posts a, a sign outside that says, you know, you, you can't bring your firearm in, you know, it's, it's the rules of, of, uh, of law that are already there. Uh, we have an active shooting training that uh, occurred uh, at Adloop uh, last week, Saturday on the 8th, and we're going to, the second group of people at Adloop will uh, participate in an active shooting training this coming Saturday and BBMR is uh, scheduled to join that group. Um, I, I just personally have, and this is again, a personal opinion. Um, there's no written testimony. I think the uh, very lengthy uh, requirements, background checks, FBI checks um, that a rational person has to go through in order to obtain a firearms permit, let alone uh, the additional steps to get a concealed permit uh, are, are, are very well thought out and have been in place for many, many years. Um, 
if there's going to be gun violence, um, you know, it's an unfortunate thing. But if if, uh, if if we enact the law today with the hopes that, you know, tomorrow there'll be no more of a particular crime simply because we added, you know, a prohibition of that activity, uh, that that stuff just doesn't happen. I personally would like to be able to continue to find myself um, confident in being able to be prepared and react uh, in a responsible uh, manner if a unfortunate incident arose. I do not think that the addition of government offices is something that, my, and my, again, personally, um, I can support. Uh, if all of us are hiding underneath chairs and throwing, you know, staples or staple removers at somebody, I don't think that's going to do us uh, any good. And I think there'll be more carnage. So uh, I believe that um, the law, as it was expanded recently, and the training um, and the responsibility as a citizen with the additional uh, understanding that you're given. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's something that you're given that could be taken away, but you had to earn it first. And so I'd just like to close by saying, I have 100% of support for uh, adding precincts if it's necessary. And uh, Ms. Uh, Chief Ignacio can already implement that. I just think that God forbid, if there's a situation that um, could be uh, quick, more more rapidly addressed with less ultimate damage, then I think that that's uh, something that we should all think about. So appreciate the time, Senator Talahi. Thank you very much, Lester. Uh, let me go to uh, Senator Frank Blast. Uh, Frank, go ahead, sir. Not, nothing right now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Nothing right now. I just want, wanted to ask something with uh, the um, with Senator Moynihan, because this group doesn't address, you know, it would, especially on that active shooting. So on all the, um, the senator's offices, you know, not even the senator can, can be allowed to bring a concealed weapon and, because, you know, I'm just concerned about uh, the active shooting situation. And, you know, if there is an active shooting situation, uh, every two seconds, somebody's going to die. So if there's no uh, no permit that can be given to to any of the senators or the staff for the protection of that office, uh, then what are we going to do? Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, uh, good question. Well, we're amending uh, the current law. Now, the current law says... Um, excludes the uh, bringing in of a firearm, whether uh, concealed or not concealed, into the Congress building, into the Superior Court of Guam, into the Department of Education, Department of Corrections, and Department of Youth Affairs. That's, that's the existing law. Uh, the bill is just amending to include Guam Police Department, uh, which was asked of our office to do so uh, by uh, the command staff, uh, which the chief mentioned, uh, Lieutenant James Cruz, Lieutenant Flickinger, Captain Sonny Castro, Sergeant John Paris, Sergeant Leroy LG, and Sergeant uh, Sula. Uh, they explained to me that there was an incident at GPD where uh, a gentleman did come in, was kind of upset, but was bearing an arm. Uh, not drawn or anything, but they could see the arm. They were asked, they asked, the officers asked him to uh, uh, place his firearm back in his vehicle. And he said, by what authority do you have? Uh, there was no authority uh, according to this current law. And that's why I guess why we, we uh, did specify in the prior law, whatever legislation wrote this, to, to include the Superior Court, Department of Education, DOC, DYA, uh, as, as well in the Congress building too. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Carlson does bring up a good point. And, um, and by the way, just going back to how the other government agencies were included during the discussion with these officers, 
was they needed the authority if, for example, uh, uh, Guam Water Works, works calls to say, hey, there's a guy in here with a gun. We told him to take it outside. And he says he's not interested. You have no authority. So the Guam Police Department wanted the authority to do so, right? Uh, just like other businesses post the sign saying no firearms allowed. I believe Micronesian Mall is, is one of them. Um, you know, so that, that was their concern, just to have the authority to uh, diminish any- What about possession of a firearm? Uh, if you're well, I'm licensed. not talking about people from outside, but, but you know, for a senator to or one of his staff to uh, to carry a, to have in possession a firearm, just for the protection, just in case there's a, there's a uh, you know somebody would come in and, and uh, you know rapid shooting and all that. Uh, sure. So what yeah. are we gonna do? So this law is not addressing that. Uh, right, the, right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's a good question. What about my office? Right, very, very good question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's something we can amend the current law. So the, this, this bill is just adding the Guam Police Department and government agencies. Possibly an, an amendment you could consider is if the director of that department or the agency head so authorizes their employee or a director to do so, they may do so. Uh, that amendment can also be included. But the present law, not, not this bill, the present law ex excludes our right to bring as senators in, into the Congress building. Okay, so if, if we wanna change that, you know, there's, there's always a possibility. But, but this bill was, was at the persuasion of GPD uh, at an incident that occurred at GPD where they were challenged uh, to, by the person that entered to say, I don't have to basically, if I don't want to put my vehicle in the car and secure it, I have every right to do so. Uh, if GPD can do this on their own, well, I'm, uh, that, that would be great, but obviously the, the law is already here. For some reason, I guess we had to do it, not, not by my doing, but by, prior legislation, just to eliminate some confusion out there. So uh, if, if we wish to, uh, if the body is more concerned about just one department, then you know, we can discuss that, I, I feel. Uh, if we wanna look at the whole, the whole government of Guam, then uh, we can discuss that as well. But if we wish to change where the, as senators uh, or our office staff wish, wishes to bring in a weapon and we do authorize it, maybe we had to do an amendment for that. But the current bill is just for the purpose of GPD and government agencies. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hope that answers your question. Okay, at this point in time, I wanna call on our Senator, uh, Senator Joan Brown. Go ahead, uh, Senator. Thank you very Does much, Does anybody Mr. else Chairman. want to speak before uh, Senator Brown? Go ahead, Senator Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's certainly an interesting discussion with regards to this bill. I, I certainly can understand the concern of wanting to, um, you know, GPD being able to, to be able to assert their position with regards to not having anyone just walk into a precinct or other location that they're in charge of uh, that are armed. Uh, but it does create other questions, as you as you mentioned. I mean, at least the Guam Police Department. I assume every officer that's there working or physically in the facility is is armed with a weapon um, on duty. Uh, a little different from the Guam Congress Building or other public places. I mean, even the court has their marshals. They're also armed. Uh, the Guam Legislature, however, and this is certainly a concern I've had over the years, even way back in the years when uh, under the temporary building were the only thing that, uh, you know, pretty much separated the session hall from anyone entering was simply, um, you know, plexiglass window, a very large plexiglass window. Uh, but the Guam legislature really has no security uh, on it of itself. Of course, I think it's always important to make sure that the house of the people is open to the people. Uh, but you do have some un unfortunate individuals that, uh, you know, may have an ulterior agenda. So that is a good question that's raised is how do we deal with facilities, for example, where we want to make it free of having any type of weapons in the facility for the safety of everyone there. 
uh, but we have no way of screening, for example, uh, unlike the court that has the ability to do that, they can screen who's coming in. I don't know if it's something the Guam Police Department in this day and age feels a need to do that. I mean, there are public schools back in the mainland where they actually have screening machines, uh, you know, for students coming into the classroom just because of concerns of, you know, uh, guns being brought into the school for the safety of the children that are there. So uh, it, it does bring up an interesting point that Senator uh, Moylan has raised with regards to this bill. Uh, but it also raises other questions that I think we need to, to further review as to what the implications are, uh, particularly for public facilities that really do not have any means of um, further protection. I, I don't think the solution is everybody armed themselves either. Uh, you know, of course, we want to make sure all public places are safe for everyone that's there. Uh, but you do bring up a very good concern, Mr. Chair, of how do we how do we address that? So I'm certainly opening to you know open to hearing more uh, discussion with regards to regards to this bill and see how can we address the issue raised by the Guam Police Department, but also try to ensure safety because particularly public places like the legislature, there there is no screening process for anybody walking in uh, as far as whether or not they are carrying a a weapon or not. And uh, certainly I would hate, uh, you know, something to happen before we actually do something about it. But, you know, we do live in a different time and age. Um, and that's a concern. That was concern with some of the situations in the colleges and schools back in the mainland where, you know, you had someone uh, who was an active shooter on campus that, uh, you know, harmed innocent people had no way of protecting themselves. So as I mentioned, I'm, I'm opening to listening further on this bill, but uh, it does bring up additional questions uh, that perhaps we need to further further discuss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator. Is there anybody else that wants to uh, uh, share uh, your thoughts? If not, I'll just go back to uh, Senator Moylan. That here we are trying to protect ourselves in an office and if there's an active shooting, somebody will come into our office and start shooting. We don't have any, any defense. Uh, then what are we going to do? The whole group in that office is going to get killed. And like I said, every two seconds on an act active shooting, somebody's going to die. So I just want to be able to carry my own weapon and protect my office uh, and my discretion on who am I going to assign to, to carry the weapon in my office. Just like the legislature, one of these days, somebody's going to go in there and start shooting. And there's nobody down there that's permitted to carry weapon at the legislature. So we need to work on this. Everybody's got, we gotta be singing on the same sort of music in as far as protecting the people in that building and making sure that nobody comes in there, uh, you know, at, with active shooting. So we need to protect ourselves also. That, and that's why we, I, I, I supported this bill. I'm a co-sponsor of this bill, but we need to think about, you know, uh, you know, the different offices of the senators uh, to allow somebody to carry weapons for their protection. That's all that I'm asking. I like the bill, but if we have an, an active shooter, uh, I don't know. How am I going to protect myself and my people in my office when I'm not permitted to carry a weapon in my office? And I understand what Senator Moylan is talking about, talking about government building. And even in government buildings, if there's an active shooting and somebody came in there with a semi-automatic weapon, somebody's going to die. And, and there's no, uh, you know, moving away from that. Somebody's going to get hurt. And we have no defense in that office because nobody's permitted to carry a weapon. That's all that I'm saying. And next, uh, is there anybody else? Uh, but uh, Senator Moran will get down on this, and I, I have to agree with uh, Lester Carlson and, and Senator John Brown that we need to work on something that to protect the discretion of the director or the discretion of the senator for somebody to carry a weapon. So that's all that I'm asking. Is there anybody else that wants uh, wants to uh, testify in reference to? Uh, to Bill 10636. Okay, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for your participation uh, in today's virtual he public hearing on Bill 10636-UR. And if you have any written testimony, you can email it to Senator Piru at senatorjpeterlai.com or deliver it to my office at 
MVP Center, Unit 10277, Route 777, Route 4, Sinahana, Guam, 96910. The time now is currently 2.40, and the Committee on Public Safety, Emergency Response, Military and Veterans Affairs, Mayor's Council of Guam, and Public Transit is now adjourned. Thank you very much. You guys have a nice day. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator.